et file met onions. Chizo ugratan and a nice little red wine on the side of you, please. Have that ready in about 15 minutes, please. I'm a bit late for um, service, if you don't mind. <laughs> um, no, why, why, why would you add bread with that? Hello and welcome to this Dungeon Fog episode. We are looking at building the church today. And it doesn't really matter what is said or what clothing your clerics and priests wear. Because usually in a fantasy setting there are many, many different gods roaming around and their powers all work in different and mysterious ways. So churches, generally speaking, or temples anyway, within your setting can be dramatically varied and should be for a large uh, a large number of reasons, which I'm not going to go into right now. We're looking at this church here that we've plonked down. I'm going to zoom in there so we can have a better look at it. So that's the church above my shoulders there. And it's designed in a very simplistic kind of way. Now, of course, churches designed in, in uh, on Earth here, I should say, all have various components in common with them with, with one another. A church, certainly a mosque, a synagogue, they have different sort of outlines and shapes and things. But generally speaking, they have a lot of things in common. And it's those things that we're going to incorporate into our church design today so that you can create a space which certainly pays the appropriate reverence to the deity in question but is also still useful for you. So I've created a floor plan here. I've made quite a long one. Now traditionally if you think of a church it really is or a temple let's say if you think of those it really is just a space where people can get together and worship and pay homage to their deity and so it's largely a big barn and oftentimes that's where they start. They actually start in a community hall or in a space where one can gather. Of course you can also hold services and things outside. I know certainly in, in South Africa there is, uh, there is a very large church organization that particularly likes to worship outside and amongst nature and you can see them from miles away. They dress in very white clothing except for various members within the organization but very white clothing in this very African African uh, landscape, these sort of sweeping brown grasslands and things. So they're quite visible, but they like to, to worship outside. That's easier said than done when there isn't three feet of snow and the temperature isn't below freezing. So sometimes you might want to have a nice large structure available to you if you have a congregation who are going to be gathering together throughout the year and in a very cold space. So that's something to bear in mind is that these spaces are important to look at from your geography perspective. Something else to bear in mind, and I think this is particularly important, I'm going to talk about it while I'm busy laying down this church. We're going to have a stone floor because I think that's what they would have forked out for. And that's the appropriate word. Oftentimes churches were built to demonstrate the financial wealth of the priest, the bishop, the deacon, the hierophant, whatever your religious nomenclature happens to be. They were built to demonstrate the power that those individuals had over their local congregations to show that they are people of importance, I might suggest that they could raise such significant money to build these large structures. Now, of course, the individuals who donated money, whether that was patrons or literally the con congregation kind of putting together money that they can afford, those were people who were trying to show their faith, trying to show their devotion. They could purchase, of course, forgiveness from the church for that as well. Now, that's just one of the aspects of one of the many different types of religions within planet Earth. If you look at your own space, you might want to do something similar. Generally speaking, however, the church is usually centered around a point. Now, for various design reasons, religious structures usually uh, try to emulate the religion, the ethos, the mentality, the thinking of the religion itself. So in order to design a church or a shrine or a temple that is going to be appropriate for your setting, 
it's important to work out how the religion works in the first place. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and design a church here where the mentality of the people is that there is a quality between the genders, but that they should be kept separate, but not separate in terms of a separate worship session. They should just be grouped separately. So what, that's what that suggests to me anyway is that the church is going to be divided in half. And there are a couple of ways that we can do that. Further to that, and I'm specifically developing this religion as we go along, by the way, for this particular video, is to demonstrate how the architecture should be reflective um, of the religion, how the religion is reflected in the architecture. So if we have this idea that we have this goddess, perhaps, um, but perhaps it's a god who has dual personality. So one aspect of the god is masculine, one aspect of the god is feminine. We're going to go with a, bi, um, a bisexual, if you like, type of creature, a hermaphrodite, I suppose. Um, but they're two distinct aspects of the god. And when the god is all about violence, about protecting the things that one looks after, that's masculine. When the god is about uh, tenderness and caring for one another, that's feminine. So you could worship either aspect of the god and you would worship it in a specific kind of way. And depending on what you were there to worship, you would be segregated to the masculine or to the feminine, feminine side. Again, what that, that, what that prescribes to me is we could either take a traditional layout of a hall and just split it in half vertically, or we could split it in half horizontally. So you have left-hand side for masculinity, right-hand side for femininity of this particular god. And you would walk in the doors from one side or the other, because perhaps this religion says that the two are not irreconcilable. They are aspects of the same entity. They Both men and women have the capacity to... Have have sort of masculine masculine feelings and feminine feelings and so it depends on what you're going there for what particular part of you needs to be perhaps given succor to 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 be provided for or nourished or uplifted depends on where you go in the church so with that in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, so this idea, this this dual nature type of thing is central to the belief. And quite literally, I'm going to make it central in, in total to the religion. And to do that, we're going to have our primary sphere of worship. I'm going to make that, let's say, 10, 20, 30, 40 foot across. And I'm going to come in, uh, let's say... 20 foot in. Is that going to work? No, I'm going to come in 10 foot in and then I'm going to go down 40 feet. So that's moving to eight squares and then in four and then across eight. Again, I'm using these red numbers and then in four and then across or up eight and then one, two, no, I messed it up. I mixed it up some way. That's okay. <laughs> My geometry is not fantastic. I understand. One, two, three. So where did I go wrong? One, two, it's got to be down there. But that doesn't make sense. Did I miscount? I did miscount. That's where my mistake was. So, all right. So we're going to get, we wanted to go in three. It's actually two that we're going in, um, which is fine. So then this one drops down here to two. This one should have been two. I don't know what happened there. It was a mix-up. So that comes in two. Then this one's going to go up one. And this one's going to come in there. Is that right? Is that feeling better? No, it's not. Where have I gone wrong? I've overcounted somewhere. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's where I went wrong. And now we just pull it in. This is one of the things that I love about this program is that you can just correct it. All right, so there is our central space, our central area, if you like, of our church um, for this, this dual-natured God. I'm then going to throw a space here uh, for worship. We've got one, two, three, four, um, five... Uh, well, four across, I should say. So it's 20 foot wide. We're going to come across to there. Thank you very much. And we're going to do the same on this side. And so these are the two hallways that you could go and worship in. Either you're on the feminine side or you're on the masculine side, depending on where you where you feel you need you need something to to venerate yourself. Now I've purposefully built these as being a little bit narrow uh, for the very simple reason that I wanted to have some rooms on the side here. 
one of the things that you have to bear in mind, and it's to me the more, I don't want to say the more interesting component of it, but it is definitely part of designing a temple is that you have all of these auxiliary rooms and that it does take quite a large number of people to to operate and maintain a working uh, and living structure. It does take quite a lot of people to, to, to make that happen. Now, I'm also going to put on this side a larger tower here, and I'm going to put another tower on this side as well. So we've got these two towers. Now, you can go in and, and look and see what these would have been called. These would be the transept towers or the towers of the transept um, to a degree because it cuts across the, the nave of the, the church. But we're not going to go into all of those fancy terms. You don't need to know those terms to, to do this. One side is masculine. So did I? I didn't screw up there again. Okay. One side is masculine. One side is feminine, and we're going to try and get the architecture. So the masculine is going to have these two large towers going up. Maybe that should be the feminine side. Now, I know that it seems a little bit uncomfortable when you sort of talk about, okay, well, these are the breasts, or this is the uh, the genitalia of the man and the female. They have always been used, traditionally in Earth's history anyway, as differentiators, and they're seen as symbols of the particular deities that they're worshipping. So you can perhaps choose mm, more prudent ways of expressing masculine and feminine. Um, certainly the circle with the plus and the circle with the arrow is, is deemed a little bit less taboo, I suppose, than more graphic representations. The Romans weren't, weren't afraid of the phallus or um, representing the feminine parts and, and amphorae and, and, and so on. Uh, it just depends on how you want to express it. So it really, really does. So we're going to call this perhaps more the feminine side. If you if you want to see a, a fallopian tubes and into the uterine canal and all that kind of stuff, it get, does get quite. I don't want to say messy because messy seems to imply that that's a bad uh, a bad thing. It's net. It's it is what it is. Um, and religion, generally speaking, is involved on in 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 that process, or at least it has some very strong attitudes when it comes to 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 that whole process so it is something to think about if you look at greek and roman mythology um reproduction and just general fornication is everywhere throughout the, the 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 mythology it's it's obviously a very central theme and i can understand why life was relatively cheap uh, in those days you had slavery going on you had all sorts of horrid and horrific ways in which you could die i would be pretty obsessed with making sure that things continued on um if i wasn't going to be there i'm going to do a series of smaller rooms in here um the the we'll leave the the graphic representation up to you so this is the idea then. We've got the central worshipping area and then we've got the male and we've got the female on either side and, and people can choose how they want to, to, to worship and they can choose where they want to worship. Uh, let me just drop this um, grid down. I know that some people don't, don't particularly appreciate the grid. Where is my grid? Why can't I see my grid? What am I not doing? Um, here we go. Um, not clicking on the map. So uh, if we drop the grid down, you can see it a lot, a lot clearer now. So we've got these other little rooms. I'm going to go in and do our usual. We're going to drop some doors in. Now, importantly, apart from the fact that religions used to try and build as large a structure as they possibly could to show off their power, to show off their their um, extreme uh, capacity, I suppose you could call it. Um, oh, I've done something stupid here. What they tried to do as well was they tried to go bigger. So the bigger they built, the taller, the higher, the more grandiose it, it they came across to their worshippers. And that was important. It was really, really, really important for them to do that and to achieve that. Because, again, it was demonstration of how devoted they were to their, their particular god, that they were willing to go so high um, that... They defied gravity, if you will, in their in their desperate attempt to to get there. Um, and what that did for us was that it certainly helped invent a whole lot of architecture, which was really, really useful. The Gothic arch, for example, is a variation. I'm just naming these. You're going to see what I'm going to do right now. But the Gothic arch is a variation on the Romanesque arch. The Romanesque arch obviously came from Rome, the Roman construction idea, and that's a circular arch. A Gothic arch is one that comes to a point. 
Why is that relevant? Why is that useful? Well, for us from a map building perspective, it isn't really useful. It's not, it's not going to define our maps in any shape or form, except that what a Gothic arch allows you to do, and yes, I'm redrawing this map, and yes, I'm not crazy. I'll show you why now. But what a Gothic arch allows you to do is it allows you to build higher than a Romanesque arch. So you think of the Colosseum and you go, that's an impressive structure. Yes, it is, but it's also about the limit that they could get to by using a Romanesque arch. The Romanesque shape, that curvature, is a very strong shape, but it's not a very good load-bearing shape. So that was one of the major limitations, was how to get that high and still have strength. Now, a Romanesque arch is also quite heavy to construct. It requires quite a lot of mortar, uh, stone, and, and the like. Again, preventing you from going very high. You've got to have very, very, very strong base walls, and it becomes a real problem. So what Gothic arches allow you to do is they allow you to go higher. And that's really useful. Uh, why am I not being able to get rid of this? Because I need to drop this down here first so that I can select this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm now... I've recreated the shape underneath, as you can see. And the reason why I've done that is because I didn't want those walls. I wanted this to be a nice open space. So in the center, you'd have the priest giving their, their, their sermon, their eulogy, their whatever it is that they're doing. And then both, both sides of the congregation will be able to hear. So Gothic arch is lighter and stronger in terms of, of being able to go up higher. And because it's lighter, you can go higher. You don't need as strong a base. Your walls don't have to be 15 foot thick to get you three stories up, whereas in the past they did. This is important for architectural reasons. It allows us literally just to build up and up and up and up and up and up, which was which was great um, for that purpose. And of course, then it slowly developed um, until eventually we got to skyscrapers. But Again, though, this, like I said, is not, not particularly relevant to us as, as map builders, but as world builders, it does start to become important. So the next time you see a, a, a fantasy type of design of, of um, an elvish structure and you look at it and you go, well, hang on a moment, there's a Romanesque arches, but it's a 20-story high structure. You can't actually do that uh, with... with with stone you it's just the, the weight is not right um or or you know the load bearing structure is not right anyway I, you don't have to go that 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 complicated i do because i like it but that's just me uh all right so i have built the central dais now it is i believe incorrect so i'm going to fix that quickly yep it is incorrect um do I get points? Do I get control it with points? No, I have to just do it again. All right, I can live with that. I'm I'm old enough to 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 live with that. I do want to use walls because what the walls are going to do is they're going to block my light, and light is incredibly important. So, I uh, realizing now I don't have a huge amount of control. I'm going to go one. I'm going to come in on this point here, and I'm going to go one in. So there to there, uh, down there cross to there I think that's right how far in do we go I don't know uh, buh, 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 buh. we're gonna no no too far we need to delete that point somehow uh, let's finish the shape and just see what we end up with is that right could I work with this could I nudge it over I can actually I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do that I'm gonna do that because I'm lazy and I want to move on um, right so Anyway, it it, it um, you don't have to go that far when you're trying to work out stuff. If 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 you don't want to, um, I like to because it makes it more accurate. No, those are too big, too big, too big. I think it should be two hundred. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make these two hundred as well. Now, how and what sort of worship and ceremony one has to go through is entirely up to you. It's not something that that we need to look at here. We'll look at that in well, we look at that in religion, design, and and the like. The trick is is that light was very very important to most religions. Now you've got to bear in mind that you have this gigantic, and it really is gigantic, this mega scaled church or space that's very, very dark because 
it's just so big. It really is tremendously dark. And you don't want that necessarily. You don't want your congregation sort of sitting there squinting uh, at the hymnals and 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 uh, the books and things. You want them to to participate actively and to to enjoy the the time that they're there. And you want to also, to a large degree, bring in the sense that there is something mystical, there is something magical, uh, something divine about the space. So you want you want you want quite a lot of complex sort of feelings uh, to to go through the, the congregation, and almost all of them are of this divine power, this divine space. So there's a lot of psychology that goes into into the designing of these uh, these structures. Um, I'm just trying to think now how I can do this so that it doesn't look like I've completely mucked it up. Uh, there's not a lot of design, there's not a lot of thought that's gone into this design, I can promise you that much. So, uh, right, there we go, there we go, good, 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 good. All right, I wanted this to be uh, a multi sort of layered thing. Now, I did a video, which you can go and check out, um, on St. Pa uh, Paul's Cathedral in Minneapolis, well, in St. Paul, as a matter of fact. Um, and what was amazing there was the story that sat behind it. And the story that sat behind it was there were... 20 different types of uh, marble that were involved in the construction of the cathedral. Spectacular, absolutely spectacular marble. Uh, was all, uh, was all over the place. You know, they had rose marble and they had this color marble and that color marble. Um, and it was it was genuinely spectacular colored marble that they, they, they had everywhere. I'm just trying to see why this isn't... Um... Have I got the right one? Oh, there we go. Um, it was genuinely spectacular, um, sort of coloured stone and, and, and the like. And I was impressed by that. I really was. And I wanted to reflect that in this particular design, was that they would use different tones of marble. OK, well, we've got this tone, we've got that tone, uh, to, to, to indicate this. And I think that works, works quite well. I'm going to drop in some statues there. So light was important. We're going to go back to these windows now. And I'm going to use double windows. I'm going to use lots of windows. Uh, this does not look like the church in the map. I realize that very much so. What I wanted to do, though, was because I thought, well, we're doing churches. We might as well do them properly. And that city map, we can always go back to and correct if we wanted to. We're not, we're not slaves to our initial design. And I think that's also important to bear in mind. I think this church... Is far more interesting than just doing a stock standard barn. Uh, maybe it's a religion that's specific to uh, to this little community. Maybe it's it's more. You know, maybe it's a, it's the national sort of religion. It doesn't matter. It's it's just a way of of expressing it. So I am literally putting windows everywhere I can to almost make it feel as if it was made out of glass. And I get a feeling that if the if the major religions of of um, sort of the 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 height of of cathedral building the 1500s if if there was a group that could invent glass that they could have built these structures out of i am fairly certain that they would have built them out of glass that's how how much love there was for it obviously it's a very expensive material at that time frame i've i've done videos where we've spoken about the glass tax um the the window tax where you got taxed on the number of quite literally on the number of windows that you had in your in your building and obviously the churches have always traditionally been exempt from tax it's one of their major kind of perks i suppose you could say if you could call it a perk uh, but it is it is certainly something that has has been part of the orthodoxy i suppose is this this tax uh, exemption. So I don't know if they were exempt from window tax. I think they were pretty much um, exempt from everything. So we've got this very interesting temple built or going to be built, I should say. And again, I'm encouraging you and I hope this is what you're doing is that you are building your own at the same time. So that you are, are, are not just uh, watching me sort of stuff up. Now, I think something else that I must mention and we started on it and we're basically getting there now, excuse me, is that when you start to look at the furniture of the church, 
churches traditionally were hit very hard by the Viking invasions because the churches had gold objects, the goblets, the candelabras, the, the everything basically was was designed to show off again wealth and power and how much favor the churches were being given from a religious perspective. So uh, you know it is something to to, to bear in mind when you are, are putting together your structure as to how wealthy, how much emphasis is there on money. So what I'm going to do to 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 give you some insight into sort of a psychological trick is that generally speaking, we associate certain colors with opulence. And the one color that we associate mainly with opulence is purple. Purple is a very noble color in the West anyway. Um, it is seen as, as, yeah, just this very powerful, uh, very expensive color, or it used to be. So purple, point number one. Point number two, I did not know this until I visited uh, the cathedral at St. Paul's last year. And a cathedral, the difference between a church and a cathedral is that a cathedral has a bishop's throne in it. If it doesn't have a bishop's throne, in other words, where the bishop sh sits, um, the the structure is simply a church. If it has a bishop's throne, it suddenly becomes a cathedral. And there's no there's no sort of it must have a spire of a certain height, etc. No, it needs to have a throne in it. And if it doesn't have a throne, sorry, it's just not on. It's not cricket. Now, if I look at this particular shape here. To put in a particular throne anywhere except in the very centre, uh, you kind of there's a bit of an off balance that that starts to happen, which I don't have a problem with. So I'm going to put this throne right here in the middle, so that both congregations can see that oh, there is the throne for the bishop. It must be an important space. Then on either side, I am going to put the chairs for the various other uh, members of the the religion, however they, they are organized. Um, I'm going to just drop those in there. So we get this sort of sense, this noble sense. Then I'm going to put a reading stand. I love these little props and things. I'm going to put a reading stand, uh, one on this side, because I think this is how it would work, and one on this side. So what would happen, I imagine, is that you would have the whoever's doing the the service or the ceremony um will will read from one side of the church and then walk over to the other and continue continue talking and i think it's important to to try and figure out how that would work now i attended a wedding ceremony in south africa where we had it was a german dutch english wedding and it was spectacular uh, we all thought oh my goodness how is this going to work how is this going to play out uh you know will we understand what's being said are we going to know you know what what what, what, what should we do, do yeah, we were confused and this was the wonderful thing was that yes the ceremony started in one of the languages i think it was english and then uh, the english pastor spoke for for the marriage married couple and then it changed and it was suddenly the german pastor who was speaking for the german section and they all did the same the, the you know not the same thing they they advanced the story if you like they advanced the the lecture which i i particularly liked um well not the lecture the ceremony i should say uh they advanced it and and really built up a fantastic um service which was lovely it just it just moved through all of the different things and at the end of it i didn't feel as if i had had missed out on anything we sang a german hymn we sang a dutch hymn we sang an english hymn it was it was really really um it was really good i thought um so so there we are something to think about now what else i want to do what we often do with the more important spaces anyway is we fill them up with the tombs of particularly important people sarcophagi etc etc i'm not going to put those here i'm not going to put them in there either because i'm going to save that space so i'm going to bring them down uh here and i'm going to say right this is known as the crypt of whoever this fallen warrior is and over here is the crypt of the lesser known fallen warrior 
you know, and this one's open because, well, you want to leave a little bit of an air of mystery. And if they speak to the 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 priest in charge, I think the priest's response will be, "Oh no no, um, we're we're just waiting for someone to occupy." <laughs> yes, no no no, just waiting, just waiting. Someone will die shortly. That's how it always works. Uh, eventually, eventually, one someone sort of pops off, and and then we've got a tomb ready. We don't have to wait for it to be built. Um, you know, yeah, it's very practical. <laughs> I don't know why they talk like that. I've chosen to choose. Pa I've chosen to choose passageways leading into these spaces because I think that just gives it a nice light, airy space. Again, it's about trying to bring in as many of the elements as we can of this this particular church uh, to make it feel like a working space. Now, what we would also have is these going to be the offices um, of the particular people who who work here. So I'm going to come back to that. I did want to put in some double doors. The doors should be open uh, all the time. At least that's, that's in my opinion. I'm going to have doors obviously on both sides so that you can obviously enter as you need to. We're going to have these wonderful little secret doors. I always used to see these doors. It doesn't really matter where you go. There's always little wooden doors, beautifully carved doors usually, done with absolute love and devotion by whomever was was part of the congregation uh, or donated. Um, and I always wonder what's behind that door? In this case, it's spiral stairs going up into the towers. We're not going to build those towers necessarily because basically it just leads up in height. Um, and this central area would be the highest point of the church uh, in this case anyway. So we're going to have some more doors here on the sides. Now, there might be smaller chapels, literally for um, if there's a baptism, if, ch if children have a certain um, experience they have to go through to become adults. All of those kinds of rituals you can build in. Something that's also important, and I haven't left it, I haven't left a space for myself, so I'm a little bit unhappy about that, is that oftentimes there'd be a secret entrance at the back so that if a member of clergy was late, they could sort of sneak in from the side. But this religion doesn't believe in that. This religion believes that if you're late, you walk in, that's okay, you're expressing your masculinity. You were out hunting boar or something, and no one can account for how long it takes to hunt boar. I don't know. Um, that's, that's just what we're going to go with. Um, right, so I think what I'm going to do, because on reflection, I do like the idea of these these archways being here, but at the same time, I feel like that they would be better served if we did them as bars. And I know that sounds a little bit odd for a church, but if they are bars, you can sort of see the holy relics in the corner. You can look over and go, oh, yeah, there's a saint. Yes, absolutely lovely. Love the saints. Good, 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 good old saint. Sainty saint. Saint, saint, saint. Um, but they're barred. And that is purely, purely for tempting players. That is a player tempting trap where it's a case of, yep, 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 yep. Uh, you, you see these bars and you could possibly break in there. Just saying. Don't have to if you don't want to. But they look like there's gold inside those sarcophagi. Uh, you know, it, it, that's what it is. All right, so we've got our two crypts in there. Um, then I just want to finish off the central area. Now, statues are not necessarily something that um, Dungeon Fog is going to have en masse. I do like to pop over sometimes in the outdoor section, put a bathtub in the middle. There we go. You watch the priest having a bath and have an experience based on that. Outdoors, sometimes they have gravestones or kneeling statues. So it's worth kind of working your way through and just seeing what's, what is available outdoors. You see, so here's a nice statue that comes from uh, modern. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one statue facing this way. It's quite nice and big too. And then I'm going to rotate it around. Hopefully it'll load up. There we go. I'm going to rotate it around and plop another one right on top of it. Back a little bit. There we go. Somewhere there. Oh, that doesn't look so great, does it? Um, all right. So we're going to have to move them. We're going to have to give them their own space. Otherwise, it's just weird. You know, you can, you can only go so far and hope that a program has a double a bisexual god 
before you you kind of have to realize well they couldn't have anticipated that everybody wanted that statue to, could could you um what i can do though to make them different is tone them differently so they're made out of different different stone uh, i don't want them to be purple but i do want them to be a bit more blue so we get this idea of the red and the blue the different sort of sides and so that means that the carpets should be red and blue or at least something very similar to that so i'm just going to scrub through yeah, that's kind of reddish all right so minus 24 54 minus 24 54 is this something that your players are going to pick up on you're designing this map and you're putting your heart and soul into it and you're going oh it's going to be blue for the male side or blue for the female side and 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 um red for this side are they going to pick up on that maybe they will maybe they won't but you will know and for me that's what map mapping map making is all about and if you think about it when you add the red carpet with the blue carpet and you put it together in the center you get a purple carpet that was not planned i wish it was but that is something that i have now noticed also this would never happen the throne would never be smaller than the chairs around it never in a million years we're pretty much done with this. All that we need to do now is step away from modern, jump over to fantasy, go down to furniture, and no, we're not. We're going to go to Victorian. Now, Victorian has got a stone bench, which just so happens to look, I think anyway, like a rather nice... Uh, let's pop these. Can I get those out there? They just happen to look like pews, and I'm going to use them as such. I'm going to halve their size, I think, so it makes the church look bigger, which is always important. So now also another important thing was, generally speaking, you wouldn't have access to the very, very front. It would be seen as a, this is for the religious types only, none shall pass. Uh, well, no, literally the nuns shall pass. No one, no one else, no one else will go there. That's the only joke I'm going to make about religion uh thing now that's a lie too uh so i'm just going to drop these in bing 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 they would not have fire codes um or maybe they would with wizards running around but you've also got priests who can create water at will so i don't think that they would worry too much about having uh two exit exit points at all uh, stations i don't think that is something that they would really particularly care about so we don't have to care about it either uh, if you have spent any time organizing events and things, you've got to have two exit points. So the one exit point's on fire, the other one is the one they can escape through. If both are on fire, they're just they then they know that they're meant to die. I don't know. Um, anyway, it's just me rambling now, talking absolute nonsense. Did I go on every square? Yes, I did. Okay, so yes, populate populate this side and that side as you so like. Um, did I have a gap there? I did have a gap there, but the carpets here don't line up. That's okay. The doors do, so it looks planned. Besides, carpets shift all the time. Now, once we're done here, it's the basically it's the office. You've got to decide what is the hierarchical structure within the church within the religion um is there a male priest and a female priest that depending on which sort of issue you have you can you can go and, and go and ask for for forgiveness etc etc you know how does it work how does it work oh what i wanted to put down here while i forgot is that traditionally and this is also something that's relatively new but traditionally uh, you would have a choir that would perform and the choir would have a special space to sit. Um, uh, what am I looking for? What's my angle? Uh, is it 125? No, it's 135, I think. Is that right? Yes. Okay, I'm just trying to make it as equitable as possible. And you'd have one bench here. Another one there, and then another one there. Okay, so uh, yes, we've got these two little side rooms here. I can see us throwing in a... Close that down, close that down. We could put in a desk. 
which I'm going to narrow down a little bit. They don't need that much space. So there's a desk. There are these weird little chairs, which I'm going to pop in as well. And what are the chairs for? Well, the chairs are to sit on. What is the desk for? Uh, quite possibly it's where you would give your donation to the church uh, after the service. It could be where a scribe is based. Uh, a lot of times, and this is more medieval than anything else, but a lot of times the uh, religious types were the ones that could read, whereas nobody else could. So you might go there to get your letter written, for example. They're not going to put chairs down because they don't want people to stay necessarily. Yeah, come for counselling, absolutely. But um, you don't have to hover for, for too much. You don't, you, don't, you don't have to stay for too long. I'm going to put it on a carpet in here. I'm going to make this the, the office of uh, our... Um, what buttons am I pressing? This is the office of the uh, priest's assistant, I suppose, um, you could call it. I'm going to put a reading desk in there because that's quite a nice little prop. And it's got a skull on it. I mean, that's what you need, really. You always need a skull. Uh, reading desk. And then this one would have chairs because you'd, you'd have made an appointment to come in and, and see the the big big man and i saw here a bookshelf because players always like bookshelves narrow that down pop that in there then on this side i'm going to throw we're going to go back to fantasy and i'm going to throw in uh probably and i kid you not this is definitely something that might be there is a little stove in here because you've got to light candles, you've got to store candles, and you've got to make some food. You're going to have lunch, basically. And serve the masses and 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 the like. Because um, they get hungry. They do get hungry. So there we are. Nice little little kitchen in there. Very small little space, but it's only for Mrs. Muggins, who comes in on a Tuesday to make the tea. Uh, for everybody when they're practicing, because that's that's quite nice, you know, when they when they practice uh, to do that. We've got enough chairs for everybody. We've got those rooms kind of covered. Fairly straightforward, very simple. We could put in some outbuildings um, if we really wanted to. What we can do now, and this is up to you as to how cluttered you want your, your map to go, but they've got these big lit chandeliers, which I quite like because A, they give off light, but B, remember the whole idea is these, these fantastic um, light arrays that, that inspire us to, to sort of believe in the religions, um, sort of divine power, if you like. So I'm going to drop them in. Some people say, well, it clutters the map too much. Maybe it does. Um, I don't know. I like them. I think they 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 make the space feel more appropriate, certainly in the church's sort of sense. And if you're not building second floors and third floors and things, I mean, yeah, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. But again, it's up to you. I'm going to just drop in now because you know I love my torches. I'm going to drop in, I'm going to make them a bit smaller and just drop in some torches uh, because light, as I have said repeatedly, light is important to to showcase or, or just to make it look more divine. I'm going to put some torches outside. Come in and find relief and understanding. And because we want this whole space to feel like that, I'm going to drop some in on either side. Now, what I usually do, and I'm going to show you this when I get done very, very quickly. Scrub over to this side. We probably have, I would imagine, normally it would be over the head of the, 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 the crypt, but because of the, the nature, I want to show those skull faces. I prefer the skull faces to the lamp. So I'm just going to throw that there. Pop this one there. This is a bit confusing in here, so I'm hoping that a nice light source will just sort of sort it out. We'll put one on this side, we'll put one over here. Here we go, that makes it a bit better. And one over here, and then one over here, one over here. 
and then one on either doorway. Now, what I normally do is you go to the lighting panel. Let me just get rid of that. You go to your lighting panel and you can change your stage lighting. So you can drop your stage lighting down outside. I'm going to drop it to about 80. I think that looks quite nice. And then your room lighting, you can actually drop the room lighting down as well. So you can go quite dramatic. We're not going to do that because that's silly. You want to actually still see what the hell's going on. So I'm also going to drop that to, I'm actually going to drop that to 90. I think that still works quite well. And then these lights, I'm going to select each light and I'm going to change the range. And I'm going to change the range to 400, which really makes them glow. Uh, as you can see, it makes, it makes the light sort of extend further out. Now it makes it too bright. It washes out the actual texture. So you just drop them down to 50 in terms of their um, brightness. And that kind of tones it down again. It brings it down, um, makes it more useful. But it, it, also, you want to sort of experiment um, with with the room and, and uh, with the map scale and, and, and the like. So I just think that it, it makes the torch practical. It makes it work better. And it gives you that lighting effect that, that we're after anyway. So always press Enter after you have added the device, uh, you know, change the lighting source or done pretty much any change manually, I should say. Um, right. And save periodically. Periodically, you should save. That is why you're at the church. No, 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 no. Now, looking better already. 50, 400. Too much? Too much. Yeah, let's get rid of one of them. Be gone. No, I'll have to select you elsewhere. All right, so that's on 400. Oh, that's still on 100. That's why. There we go. Looking better. That's done. That's done. Did I do the kitchen? Yes, I did. Uh, I'm going to come to those a little bit later on. I'm just going to finish up here. You can, of course, go to the next level if you want to. Uh, and, and again, this is how much time you want to spend doing it. I do wish that there was an automate button. Why are those so bright? I thought I'd change those. That's better. So there, um, you can go another level uh, in. I'm just going to set these last few quickly. And it doesn't take too much time. I mean, you're watching this video, probably clawing your eyes out, going, why, why are you doing it? I'm not going to change those two rooms. I think they're absolutely fine. This one, however, I will change. Um, it doesn't take a huge amount of time. I like drawing maps, so for me, it's very relaxing. It's like, oh, just sort of make your way through. And you end up with something that looks very pretty as well. I'm very happy with the way these maps look, if I do say so myself. Um, people have seen them, obviously, and they're very impressed with, with what Dungeon Fox can do. So there we are. All right, so that looks that looks more interesting. I'm going to come to each chandelier as well, and I'm going to change the chandelier to 400 and drop this down to 50. The interesting thing, uh, as an aside, whilst I'm just doing this, is that there are, well, monasteries are genu generally fairly dimly lit, whereas as the churches are not. Now, the reason is monasteries are for the monks, not for, for the, the plebs, if you like. Um, so we don't need to show off all of our light. And light is expensive. If you think about candles, especially in this time period, candles have to be handmade. And every candle that burns for five hours so that it looks great is, is a significant cost. So if you've got magic in your world and these are magical lights, well, then maybe that's a bit of a different story. But generally speaking, someone's got to pay for it. And uh, nobody likes paying for candles that are just burning away. 
it um, it upsets those that do pay for them. There's a feeling of unequalness, which I don't have a problem with. Probably just forgotten. Oh, here we go. Got to double check that they're all the same. Yes, they are. All right, and I'm going to put down one more. I should have done it before I did all of this. Um, where did I get the chandelier from? Victorian. Turn you off. Big lit chandelier. It would have one. I think directly over the top of them. Except it does kind of hide our statue, doesn't it? It does. It does, it does, it does, it does. So, you know what? It's out. It's just out. Uh, we'll, 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 we'll just say that they, they have one and you must just imagine it. <laughs> we haven't finished that map completely yet. I thought we were, but I forgot. It's always important, I think, to add elements outside. Now, if you watch the tavern one, oh, I'm going to turn on, by the way, if you're watching, I'm going to turn on rotation and scale. So I can plop down a whole bunch of little trees, some big trees which are growing outside the church. Um, and it's it's not for any other reason other than I think it, it it makes them look it makes your maps just look a little bit a little bit nicer. And why wouldn't they have trees um, growing around the churchyard um, just to make it feel more? And then I just sort of switch through the different types of trees. So you have some little trees, some big trees, all over the spot. Not so much around the towers, because you want the towers to be visible. Uh, there we go. All right. Not around the towers, he says, and then he puts them around the towers. One other thing that I like to do, and this is just to finish off the map, really it is to finish off the map, is to bring in some dirt, and we'll make the opacity about 50%, and we're going to just dirty up this floor a little bit. So it's how people walk into the church, and then in the actual church itself as well, there's going to be a lot of dirt around the pew area, as they walk in, there might be, I don't think there'd be a huge amount of dirt around, but I'm just going to, to do this. And what it does is, if you can see, it's incredibly subtle, really, really, really subtle, but it just, to me, makes the map feel a little bit more, more finished, um, if I can put it that way. Uh, because it feels like, oh, this is where people are walking on a daily basis and yes maybe there's a, a cleaner who comes in once or twice but uh, you know it's it's not something that they do on a regular basis um and it is designed for the men to to sit on that side anyway and for the ladies on this side so i'm going to have slightly less mud on this side i think uh, men generally don't really care too much about how they present themselves when they do so uh, appear in public all right so so there we are we've got some some sort of basic texturing happening i'm going to do the same thing to the garden very quickly uh let's go with um don't want any of those let's go with some rock maybe or is this this heavy kind of rock no it's heavy kind of rock we don't want to do that uh we could probably just stick with dirt as a matter of fact We've got sort of an earthy dirt, which I think is quite fun. Um, or just regular dirt. Whoops. Yes, there we go. So we'll, it's coming out across as a very weird yellow, but it's actually just, just dirt. And I like to, 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 to sort of layer it and kind of get it in the nooks and crannies. Some on the outside there. I mean, you can do whatever colours you like, really. Just get it in there. 
Make it dirty. Make it dirty. Show all. So there is a temple with the design ethos behind it. So obviously if it was for a different type of god, we would have a different type of layout and we would express it in different ways. But the idea here is to quite simply try to put down onto paper, in this case, what you feel the church's design would be. And it wouldn't just necessarily be a barn. It could be anything. Now, if you if you like, if you go, okay, well, I don't really like the chandeliers too much. I think they're a bit silly, or I don't like this, or I don't like that. You, I mean, obviously you can take those out. This to me creates quite a nice, interesting encounter space. Now, normally I'm talking about how do my PCs escape? They've got dozens of windows they can leap out of. The second floor, by the way, would probably just be windows. Those, these little cryptoriums and the, the little offices and the kitchens and, and those kinds of things would only be a single floor high. So you'd have these four towers and then you'd have the central dome. I almost imagine like it's a big dome in the middle. Um, but the, the ceiling would be a double volume ceiling to, again, give us that sense of drama uh, that, that they so like to do. So that's how I would do it. That's how, how I think about temples and things. And this would be for a fairly good, good deity, I suppose. Um, I quite like the fact that dramatically you could have the party enter in on the masculine side, for example, if they're hunting down somebody and they see on the feminine side someone there. They can't run across this religious central area, this this sort of central area around me. They just they're not allowed to do it. So they have to run out the back, run out there and sort of round the church. And, and whilst they're doing that, the person in the front is sort of slipping into one of the side doors or going up the, the tower. So I, I can imagine it being quite dramatic from that perspective. Um, so, yes, there we are. That is how I go about building a temple. And in this case, a church. It would have attached to it a graveyard traditionally. And of course, graveyards are wonderful things for fantasy players to play with. But a graveyard and designing the layout of the graveyard, I think, is is fairly, I don't want to say standard. There are many things to it that one, one looks at. But um, it's certainly not the purview of this particular Dungeon Fog video. Until next time, I wish you and yours the happiest of map making. <laughs>